All right, I'm going to start this episode in the middle of the night. It's uh, getting pretty close to midnight and we have a bunch of car guys that are actually coming out and we're hitting up the local toge uh, outside of Istanbul. We've got the Mazda MX-5 club with us and we're going to go check out what's happening uh, in Friday nights here in Istanbul. So this is the local meeting spot, it's a nice coffee shop. We have plenty of parking for cars to park up and we have a nice selection of new and old. Nice to see some NAs here, MBs and a couple of NCs. People are dropping the top and getting ready for some driving. All right, so the actual cool thing for me is that I heard there's a bunch of uh, potential drifters that are going to be coming uh, along tonight. So we might be able to see some action, some, uh, I guess what we're used to seeing in Japan kind of replicated here in Turkey. You know, as ever, quite excited to kind of see how people enjoy their cars in other countries. So we're going to jump in the car, head up the mountain and find the actual corner where people uh, kind of set up the gallery, uh, if you could call it that. Some of these guys are already off. So if you guys are actually wondering why there's flashing lights, it's because Erdem has brought out his police car again. Yeah. <laughs> this Let's is the way to travel. Them. So this allows us to be very official when doing things here in Turkey. We're making our way up the hill in the police car in total safety. It's the first time I head up to an illegal toge and feel this safe. So we've made it to the meetup point, it's just past midnight and we're up in the hills and there's a nice selection. I have to say I'm quite impressed in how many cars actually turned up, we've got an RS3, a Lexus RC, BMW 2 Series, Mercedes A-Class, a Hachiroku, and a few other cars and it's yeah very very dark hey there's even an m2 up here and it's so dark it's like super super dark so um, i think what's gonna happen is we're gonna position ourselves at the corner uh where everybody drifts oh sorry should i say uh drives and uh try and get some action have some fun and uh head back home so this is my last night here in istanbul and uh, what a nice way to kind of end it. So let's see what uh, what's going to happen tonight. Here we go, this is the spot.
Right, so we did a bit of, uh, you know, kind of gallery uh, filming on the corner that these guys practice at all the time. And uh, now I'm going to jump in this Hachiroku here and uh, get some driver perspective. I mean, passenger really, uh, but you know what I mean from the inside. Uh, hopefully we can do some tandems with the two series and uh, yeah, just have some fun from a different angle. It's uh, pretty cool to see what these guys get up to and how chilled everybody is around here. Uh, allowing this to actually happen. It kind of reminds me of Japan like 20 years ago when things were a bit more chill. But uh, yeah, enjoying this quite a lot tonight, I have to say. What a nice, uh, nice last night to have here in Istanbul. Holy, what a ride that was. These guys know these roads so well. What an amazing way to end uh, my last night here in Istanbul. Big thumbs up to these guys for coming out. Uh, they've made my journey here that little bit more special. Well, there I was thinking that the night was over, but one thing I've learned about Turkey is that the nights just keep on going and they kind of blend into the next day. Uh, it's now way past two o'clock and we ended up visiting a local YouTuber here because he's um, actually doing something really crazy. He's been working on a project here in his uh, home garage uh, that he's actually been chronicling on his uh, YouTube um, channel, which I'll link below. And uh, I just had to take a look. So let's go and talk to him and see what he's been up to with this insane build okay so i'm here with the owner of this really yes. interesting project yeah. uh, let me know your name and your channel so we can link it below sure and my people name is can Dukan, follow Dukan Manchu. actually i'm a dj and uh, became a youtuber somehow <laughs> because passion, of, because of, of this car yeah, yeah passion of yeah. car yeah basically i built car from scratch i make projects yeah this is my longest project so far it took me this is my fifth year yeah you said five years yeah five years that's insane Actually, I was building this car for my own. Uh, I started the pandemic. Uh, then I suddenly started to, to put some videos on YouTube that people liked it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how it started. Uh, I purchased an R33 four-door car at the beginning, uh, which is very rare. Uh, we don't have skylines in Turkey yeah. and we cannot import them. Uh, before it was like 25-year-old car could be imported in Turkey. Uh, now, then they changed the uh, they changed the rules, yeah. law, so it became 35 year. Just because of that, I have a car that is staying in Belgium that I wanted to import. I per that I got, <laughs> and I can't import it. I have to stay wait like 10 more years. My God. Then I say, you know what? Screw that. I'm just gonna build it. Uh, this R33 chassis uh, car was uh, on an auction. <laughs> That's how it uh, it came in Turkey. We have like. I would say five skylines, right? Right, Erdem. We have five skylines in Turkey. Yeah. So we have uh, five cars. So this is one of them. Uh, it was it was uh, belong it belonged to a cons one of the council. Mm -hmm. um, when the council decided to go back to to his country, he just left the car, and the government took the car and put it on an auction because he doesn't know what to do about it. And you scooped it up. Yeah. But the thing is, when I purchased the car, uh, they put a rule on a paper saying that you cannot drive a left and right hand drive car. You have to switch it, otherwise mm -hmm. you're not going to have a title of, of it. Yeah. So basically I started to chop the car. I said, okay, this was such a clean car and they made me cut this car. I'm, not, I'm just going to make, a, make a two door out of it. I, at the beginning I was planning, since I have an R33, I'm just going to make it uh, R33, so R33. the original plan was never to make a no, 34, no, no, just no. to it basically was, enjoy a 33. Yeah, and yeah. I thought that I, can, I could build this uh, two-door R33. 
Uh, and then the rules came against um, you, basically. Actually, uh, not the rules, but then I started to search for parts. My dream is about R34. That's what made me buy a Skyline. Mm -hmm. But I never imagined that this could turn to an R34. I started to collect some parts from all over the world. It's I didn't have like a white hair <laughs> when I started this car, really. <laughs> no, I swear, I'm not joking. Uh, yeah, Stressful man. Process. If they, white bird, yeah, white people. <laughs> yeah, people ask me if I would sell the car. Man, I have, I will never have to have to sell it. But if I do something such a silly thing, I don't think in my life I'll do such a project anymore. No, really. I mean, and you, you're saying you're about what eighty percent now? Uh, I'm eighty-five percent done. Some reasons why I couldn't finish it is I just changed my mind. This is an R, uh, RB28, by the way. This, okay. is, this is a fully built engine. Oh, I like the Ross performance. Yeah. Uh, by the way, they helped me out. They, they made me sponsorship about it. Oh, uh, nice. They believed my project when I emailed them. Uh, then I suddenly said, okay, we are building uh, like a 1000 horsepower engine expected out of it. Mm -hmm. This is fully Tomei built engine uh, with uh, forging internals and stuff. Then suddenly two days ago, I said, why well, I'm not doing something crazy and uh, just put an electronic um, throttle on it mm -hmm. because I can do a lot of uh, combination with that. Are you going single or six throttle? I'm going single. I just purchased my turbo over there. We can go discuss about it. Okay. Uh, my goal is not 1000, but um, 900 straight yeah. out, of this, out, of, out of this. So uh, basically, like if we take it from the front, is all this section still ER Yeah, R33. R33. No, okay. this is R33 completely. Uh, like half chassis, yeah, and then uh, I have some parts. Uh, so you got rid of from. you cut the A pillar, got rid of the roof. Yes, exactly. And then you had custom glass made yes, here exactly. in Turkey. Yes, exactly. Because this part is R33, this part is R34. Sure. So I have that. I have this uh, sent to a uh, to the factory. Yeah. Uh, they took my car for about 10, 12 days. So all the parts that I can't find, I make them build. Yeah. Like the this one. Right here. The front. Handmade. Uh, so bumper mounts are all custom. Yeah. So these are legit R34 GTR Xenon Exactly. Lights. Yeah. You got a Z tune Nismo bumper waiting exactly. to be fitted. R34 doors. Yeah. The doors are, they came out of a uh, race car. I mean, like I said, I'm gathering parts from all over the world. Mm -hmm. So um, they were chopped. So we have them hand built. Uh, inter internal interior in the doors like these ones. Oh wow! This panel didn't exist, so we have them handmade here. Um, and this is all steel. Yeah. Wow. And then you brought in an R34. Exactly. These quarter are, panel. These were the easiest part because these this has arrived from uh, Nissan. Yeah. I mean, for instance, I uh, one of the customer custom problems is that. Uh, these tail lights are not um, made for European spec cars, mm. right? Mm. So when you have them imported, they usually get confiscated because they don't they match don't the, the rules. Marking, you yeah. know, they say, for which car are you going to put this on? Yeah. So I show them my paperwork and they say, okay, this car was never imported in Turkey. So you don't need these tail lights. So I got like my tail lights and my headlights all confiscated. So when I had these ones imported, I put another name on it, on the paperwork. So that's how they... Like most people would just give up. Like it's just so much hassle. Well, when you start and you believe, yeah. and you have like, I have 420,000 people uh, watching this car, yeah, yeah. waiting for them to, you don't want to, to disappoint. be finished. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. And you got a carbon trunk, carbon wing. Yeah. yeah we, and you call this Project Skyline. Yeah. This is the name of my project, Project Skyline. I'm, I'm, I'm always purchasing parts. I know what I have to buy, but I didn't know that um, the hubs on this car are the R33, uh, um, what do you call that, front? Knuckles, knuckles. Knuckles. They were 12 millimeters, and I didn't know that. Uh, so I couldn't uh, put these on, so I'm gonna have new works. I, ha I always have troubles. Yeah. When you, when you do a project for the first time, you always get troubles. Every single thing. And in this country, I don't have anybody to ask about them. Mm. There you go. This means it's got over. It, it, it was accepted by the customs. Oh, so they put yeah. special tape on it. So uh, this is on a. So 
we're gonna power this up with a oh pop. wow that's a big boy yeah g35 this is uh probably uh, a good 900 G g35 900 turbo nice. we're gonna be using it actually we discussed it about if we should should we go any more high higher rpms we just want to have fun like have boost in all the rpms mm. we said okay you know what when we have like evos and uh, subarus or supras coming next to us we want to have fun we have the big boy waiting waiting here oh you're actually using yeah, nitrous. yeah. yeah we're gonna use uh, nitrous as well and this is what final touch <laughs> once the car yes, is done so this is the godzilla um i see this car as a beast like the japanese call them as uh, gojira right gojira. The, the rain gojira. Yeah. <laughs> What are we looking at here? We are, we're looking at the second generation Clio Sport engine here. It's called uh, F4R. Uh, actually, it's a 172 horsepower oh, wow. engine in stock. It's supposed to be. Yeah. But this car has uh, forged internals, uh, high compression pistons, and uh, high degree uh, cams mm -hmm. on it. So we're expecting around 210 horsepower out of this car. All right, 3 a.m. And now it's time to check out uh, Luca's Hachiroku, which is actually pretty cool because it runs a 3S swap. And that will be the last <laughs> thing that we do tonight. Um, I have a flight uh, tomorrow morning, so I need to get back to the hotel and pack. But uh, what an action-packed day and night that it's been today. And uh, what a way to end it after uh, amazing driving in the hills and checking out some really cool, unique projects that are being built here in Turkey. <laughs> oh, nice. Like oh, I said, wow. like 90, 95% done with the car. <laughs> so you kept the original seeds. Well, this is an original. I found them. Yeah, this car has been standing here for, uh, for three or four months already. Killer panda. Exactly. <laughs> Don't make the panda mad. And I really appreciate you taking the time to show me all your cool stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you, you had time for me, everyone. It's very late at night. We made it happen. <laughs> uh, well, it's it's morning. What time is it now? I think it's, it's four. Morning. Morning. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, yeah, four What's the time? Oh my God. Almost four o'clock. There it is. Yeah. Last thing, let's take a look at another engine. Oh, you do like your RBs. So this is what, a fun practice drift car or competition car? Or? Competition car, yeah. yeah. I have, uh, I got twice. Big, big thank you to this guy who brought me out. Big spotlight in the space. And that, that ends my trip to Turkey. Until the next time I come back.